Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in God's house today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. We welcome the visitors. May the Lord bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a real inspiration to every one of you. And you can do us a favor and do others a favor if you'll get on your phone out there in the radio listening audience and call a friend and have them to tune in and get this hour coming up. I did have a birthday this past Wednesday on May the 28th. I was two score, two decades, four years, 12 months, 52 weeks, and 365 days old last Wednesday. And I thank God for every mile post that he's given me. I hope I'll be able to see others. And we appreciate every kind word, prayer, and every thought, everything that you have contributed in our direction during my birthday. May God bless you. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn, would you please, to the uh, book of uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to speak to you on this subject, when Israel faced its Jericho. Now, this message and the good singing you heard will be on cassette tape. And this is tape number 2. Uh, 32, tape number 232, and we'll send you this tape for a gift of $3, and the gift is used to help defray our radio expense. If you'd like to have a list of our cassette tape, we can send you a list of about 226 we have listed here, and you can select the ones you desire. So you turn, would you please, to Joshua 6, it's page 264 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. There's a preacher one time that married a couple, and when he finished marrying them, he, he so the uh, bridegroom said to the uh, preacher, said, uh, what do I owe you, sir? And the preacher said, well, whatever you think she's worth. So he gave him a dollar. The preacher took the dollar, reached over and raised up the veil over the uh, bride's face, took a good look at her, turned around and gave him 50 cents back. Well, you don't usually get any money back like that, but uh, I guess maybe he's trying to be honest. Now Joshua chapter 6, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. And the seventh day ye shall accomplish the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet. All the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now look at verses 20 and 21 in the same chapter. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him. And they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Both men and women. Young and old. Ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. Now you know the story here. You've read it many times. How that the Israelites left the land of Egypt. They crossed over the Red Sea, which is a type of redemption. They went through the wilderness, the wilderness journey. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they crossed the river Jordan. Jordan, their type of the spirit-filled life. And after they crossed over the river Jordan, then of course, they had to clean out the land. God said you go into the promised land. And you clean out the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hittites and the Stichomatites and all in the land. And get them cleaned out. And then you take over the land. And so they crossed over the river Jordan. And there they were between the river Jordan and the city of Jericho. Now I have been to that city many times. I've seen the old ruins of the city of Jericho. We see it every time we go to the Holy Land. And they crossed over Jordan. And there they were between the city of Jericho and the river Jordan. And so the time had come now for them to march in. 
and take the land of Canaan. But before they could take the land of Canaan, they had to conquer Jericho. Jericho was a gateway into the land of Canaan. In fact, it was a land where the spies came and said they have walls built of heaven. There's giants over there who look like grasshoppers in their sight. Now they had to take this a city, destroy this city and this people in order to be able to march on and take the land of Canaan. And so there's several things I want to say about the taking of the city of Jericho. We find that the Israelites faced their Jericho. Now in your life, sometime or another, you're going to face your Jericho. You may be facing your Jericho today. You may be facing a battle or a decision that you can hardly cope with, that you can't understand, that you tried to figure out and seem like you can't get it figured out, you don't know the answer. And this could be your Jericho. If you haven't faced your Jericho as yet, you most certainly will face your Jericho as you serve God maybe more than one time. Now they face their Jericho. Forty years expired, of course, since the time of the crossing over out of the land of Egypt and coming into this land. And now they're facing their Jericho. Here we have a city to be entirely demolished by people walking around it. Now God said, I want that city taken. I want that city destroyed. And I want you to only walk around that city. Now God's way is not our way. The leaders of Israel was preserved in an ark of bulrush, of course. That was Moses. That was God's way. A giant was overcome by slinging a stone. That was God's way. A prophet Elijah was sustained by a widow's handful of meal. That was God's way. And the Bible said that God's way many times looks foolish to the people of this world. Especially those that think they're so learned of the things of this world. And God said, I want you to walk around the walls of Jericho. Walk around those walls uh, six times. That is one time every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, I want you to march around that wall seven times. Now that was God's way. That seems foolish in the eyes of the world that God would have this army of Israel just to march around the walls of Jericho. Now remember, God's way is not always our way. You keep that in mind. Now you may have a plan in mind that you want God to do something, lead you. And secondly, God is independent of all natural means and superior to all the laws of nature. God doesn't have to bow down or work according to natural means. Nor does he have to bow down and uh, work to uh, the law of nature. God can overcome these things because he's God. There was Daniel in the lion's den. All in area, those lions would have eaten up the average man. But they did not harm Daniel. There was Jonah in the whale's belly. As a zero rule, a man would have died shortly after swallowed by a whale. But this man lived three days and three nights. Elijah would have starved to death, the average man would have, but Elijah sat down by the brook and the ravens fed him, sandwich after sandwich, no doubt from Abraham's cupboard. And then we find the three Hebrew children thrown into the fiery furnace. The average person would have burned to death immediately, but as soon as they were thrown into the fiery furnace, Jesus came down from heaven and joined them. And Nebuchadnezzar saw the Lord because of their obedience. So God is independent of all natural means and superior to all the laws of nature. Number three, I want you to notice great difficulties and powerful oppositions are encountered in this warfare of faith. Now these people had to fight by faith. They had to operate by faith. They crossed the Jordan River. They did that by faith and Jordan is a type of the spirit-filled life, and that's the way you feel with God's spirit, by surrender, obedience, and by faith. And Jericho was a fortress, a huge fortress. I mean walls, it was built up high, strong, and thick. Now just the average army could not penetrate those walls. The average army could not come in and very easily take over Jericho because it was a great fortress, and God allowed these things to be put in the way to train and test the Israelites as they crossed over. Now listen to me now. If you're facing your Jericho, there may be some things that God has put in your way, in your life, in order to test you, 
to train you, to try you, or to put you through basic training, or, or, or send you through boot camp, in order that he might make a good soldier out of you. Now God lets these things, allows these things, or put these things in our past many times to teach us a lesson. When I was in the army in World War II, <coughs> excuse me, in training, I took my training in Camp Blanding, Florida, there in the infantry, and in the hottest months of the year. And there we crawled upon that hot sand, black dirt, and many times we had to jump off of buildings, swing across on, uh, gullies on vines, run, hike, jump, and, and it just about seemed like going to kill us before we got through our training. But when we finished our training, all those obstacle courses, all the hard, rigid training that we took there at Camp Blanding, Florida, in World War II, equipped us, got us in shape, and got us ready to face the enemy on the battlefield. Had it not been for that rigid training and the basic training there in Florida, I'd have never made it as a soldier in Italy, in France, and in Germany and Austria. But through that training, God got me in shape, or fitted me, rather, the army did, fitted me for the occasion. And so it is with God's people. God fits you for the occasion. God gives you training. God gives you an obstacle course to overcome. And if you'll go ahead and obey God and overcome these things and endure these oppositions and criticism and lies and slander and things that people throw toward you, if you'll continue on, keep your head up, be a good soldier, God will make you strong and you'll be a far better soldier of the cross by enduring these things than you would have if you'd have given up or turned back. Number four, we find Satan's stronghold cannot stand before people who are obedient and to fully rely upon the living God. I don't care what kind of Jericho the devil may stick out there in front of you. It may be one on your job. It may be one in your community. It may be one in your home. It may be a Jericho in your family. Beloved, God Almighty can help you to overcome if you rely fully upon the Lord. The Bible said, lean not upon your own understanding, but lean upon the Lord. Trust in Him, and He'll lead you along the way that is right. The Canaanites were under the control of Satan, but down came the great fortress. The Canaanites were controlled by the devil, of course, and, and these people here in Jericho were controlled by the devil, but down came that great fortress. I don't care what kind of fortress the devil builds up ahead of you, God can help you to overcome it. In the 16th century, the kingdom of the papacy was shaken to its foundation by the preaching of Martin Luther and his contemporaries. They shook that foundation. About 50 years ago, some of the high place of heathenism fell by some mighty missionaries that fell led of God to go to the foreign field. Now this must come by the power of God's spirit, the overcoming, the victories, the battles, in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So God will help you to overcome your Jericho. Quit worrying about it. If it's out there, it must come down. You must conquer Jericho in order to get into the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan is a type of the spirit filled life. Whenever you feel with God's spirit and then you get your Jericho, you're headed in to overcome the enemy. Because there's many obstacles out there. The devil's not going to put up any obstacles out there in front of a person that's backslid on God and doing nothing. No, sir. Satan will not bother you. But if you're filled with God's Spirit, then you're going to run into many obstacles as you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, the walls of Jericho came down by an act of faith. By an act of faith. Your sojourning today for God must be done by faith. You're saved by faith. You should serve God by faith. And you should exercise that faith in God. God wants you to do so. All the victory of Israel came by faith. Moses at the Passover, a great act of faith. Moses crossing the Red Sea with God's people, an act of faith. Israel crossing Jordan, an act of faith. You must exercise some faith in God as you sojourn for Him. Don't sit down, murmur, and complain and say, well... The obstacle's too big. I can't do the job. I can't quite make it. Exercise some faith in God. 
I could take up all of my time, stand here and tell you about the first church I organized and how we started that church and how I went on the radio almost 38 years ago, all by faith, purchased a little home, borrowed a down payment, all by faith, had no promise of income, no promise to pay the radio bills, no promise to build the church, no promise of anything. I had to take that step entirely by faith. And by taking that step by faith, God honored that step. Somebody said, well, old Virgil Edwards, he's gone on the radio here in Athens, and he'll never make it because there have been some pretty good preachers on the air here, like Jess Henley and others, and they didn't stay on, and he'll never make it. And, and uh, you know, that's been about 38 years ago, and I'm still on. They said he won't make it. Wait and see. He'll never make it. And we've been on there almost 38 years every day, Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ out of the classic city of Athens, Georgia. If God is in it, you can do it. If God is in it, it can be done. If God is in it, God can bring down your Jericho. He knows how to do it. God was in it. God put me on the radio. God led me to organize that particular church I'm talking about now. God led me to do those things. I took a step by faith as a young preacher. And God honored that faith. You've got to exercise some faith in God. You can't sit around and twiddle your thumbs and sing, I shall not be moved and expect God to do anything for you and through you. You must exercise some faith in God. Then we find number six, various aspects of their faith. Now here is a daring of their faith. When they crossed Jordan, they had burned all the bridges and boats behind them. They were in the enemy's territory. It was do or die. Now, there may come a time in your life when it's do or die. There may come a time in your life when you don't have any other choice. There may come a time in your life when you cross Jordan, you burn the bridges, you just destroy the boats, and you cross Jordan, and ahead of you is Jericho and the land of Canaan. You can't get back across Jordan. You can't go back. The bridges have been burned. The boats have been destroyed. There's not but one thing for you to do, and that's to press forward for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. If God has saved you, God's laid his hand upon you, you know you're God's child, there's no turning back. There's no discharge in the army of God. There's a lot of people today out in the cemetery because they, because they thought they could turn back. There's a lot of people died a premature death because they thought they could go back across Jordan. You can't do that. You must move forward as a good soldier. When God designed your armor, He gave you no protection for your back. That means you go forward at all times. There's no turning back on God. A man that puts his hand to the plow cannot turn back. You so he's not fit for the kingdom of God. You must move on and face enemy. Here they were facing Jericho. They couldn't get back across Jordan. They had to do something. They had to move forward. No other alternative. And they move forward by faith. We have here three degrees of faith. We have a faith that receives. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 12, to as many as receive him, them gave you power to become the sons of God, even of them to believe on his name. That's faith to receive. Secondly, that's a faith that reckons, which counts on God to fulfill his promise. When you get saved, every promise to the child of God rightly belongs to you. All you've got to do is take this blessed book, find that promise, believe God, and say, God, say, God, you said it. It's in this book. This is my promise, and believe it. That's what God wants you to do. And then third, there's a faith which risks or dares something for God. Now, have you ever really risked or dared something for God? Have you ever stepped out for God and really dared something to do something for the Lord? Have you? You ought to. Moses stood before Pharaoh and dared old Pharaoh to do something about it. And God is with him. Elijah was on Mount Carmel and faced the false prophets. And they couldn't do anything about that. He called fire down from heaven and proved that Jehovah God was a true God. David faced Goliath and, and knocked him down with a stone and cut his head off with a giant's own sword. Beloved, that was a daring faith. There may come a time when you're going to have to exercise a daring faith. You must take that step of faith. I remember the words of the late Joe Parson, great man of God, going to be with the Lord. Joe said this, it makes pretty good sense, but we still need to exercise faith. Joe Parson said when he was a young preacher that he would jump upon the brush pile, 
just to see what ran out. But it said when he got to be an old man, he walked around that brush pile a few times and peeped under the edges to see what he could see under there before he jumped on top of it. Well, that might be pretty good advice when you got the snow of ages on your head and your foot footsteps become slow and, and you know you're moving toward the end. You might want to take a peep under the brush pile. But while you're young, energetic, and love God, jump in the middle of that brush pile and see what runs out. God will be with you. God will help you. I've jumped on top of the brush pile a lot of times to see what come out. And God's always been with me and helped me as I sojourn. Oh, you say now, Preach Edward, you told us a while ago how old you were. Now we know exactly how old you are. I gave the months, the years, the days, the weeks. And you ought to know. I want to be sure you got them all. And you say now, Preacher, since you're that old, would you jump on top of the brush pile today? Well, I'll have to admit to you, I'd rather walk around a few times and peep under it a little bit before I jumped on it. But I'd jump on it. But I want to peep first. And so now you are younger and God has blessed you and helped you and saved you. Just jump in the middle of the brush pile and see what runs out. And God will bless you and help you. And so sometimes it must be that daring faith. That is the faith of obedience. You must be obedient to God. Now God's way is not our way. You know, we told you the other day about this man, Naaman. This great General Douglas MacArthur of his day had to go down and duck himself in the river of Jordan. He didn't like that. That was God's way for him. Now, God's ways are not our ways. You must remember that. Now, there's the discipline of faith. Now, the Bible says in Joshua chapter 6 and verse 10, And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then shall you shout. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 7, There's a time to rend, there's a time to sow, there's a time to keep silent, and there's a time to speak. So when God's time is your time to do it, then you do it, and God will be with you. Now notice some suggestions here that probably would be made to the average general today if he was attacked in Jericho. Some suggestions would be, well, why don't you just scale the wall? You have some men here that can climb like squirrels. Why don't you let them scale the wall, go over the wall into Jericho? Joshua said, no, that's not God's way. Somebody else said, well, why don't you use some battling rams? You have some old-fashioned battling rams. Well, just take those battling rams and get you about a dozen men and run into that wall with those battling rams. Joshua said, no, I, we, can, we won't do it. That's not God's way. No doubt somebody else said, why don't you just get you a pick and mattock and turn under that wall? You can dig under that wall and get into that city. Joshua said, no, that's not the way. Now, we need patience in obeying God. We need to go God's way. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were accomplished about seven days. Now, let's find out how God accomplished this. God said to the general Joshua, God said, I want you to take your people and you march around that wall six days, one time every day. Now, when they started marching, no doubt those Jerichoites climbed up on the wall and said, look at that bunch of idiots out there walking around this wall while they know they can't get into us. And they're acting like a, a, a group of idiots out there walking around the wall. And Joshua said, now, God said, I want you to let them walk around the wall six days, one time every day. And then God said, now, on the seventh day, I want them to march around that wall seven times on the seventh day. And that's 13 times. Now when you walk around that wall seven times on the seventh day, I want you to let them in uh, blow with their trumpets, blast with their trumpets, and I want everybody else to shout as loud as you can. I want you to yell. I want you to holler. I want you to shout as loud as you can. So they did that. They marched around once a day for six days. On the seventh day, they marched seven times. They blew the trumpets. Everybody shouted and those walls hit the ground. Now the Bible said Rahab the harlot had her house on top of one of those walls. So I don't know, he might let that little part stand. But anyway, the walls came down and the army went in. Now this is God's way. Now they had to wait on the Lord in Psalms 37, 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Find out God's way. Don't run ahead of God. Wait on the Lord. Find out God's way. And you can overcome your Jericho. Some of you right now may be facing your Jericho. I may be speaking to someone on the radio listening. You're facing your Jericho. 
God can bring that Jericho down. God can see you over that wall. God can see you through. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Abraham got into trouble because he and Sarah couldn't wait. And he married Hagar, and there come Ishmael. All that trouble from then until now over in the Holy Land is because of that. Moses, at the first appearance of Israel, thought they should listen to him and follow him out. And they wouldn't do it. He killed an Egyptian. He had to go to the outside of uh, Egypt and live in the land of Midian for 40 years. Now they look forward to God bringing these walls down. They believed it would come. And they exercised great faith in God. Let's look at the scripture. In Joshua chapter 6 and verse 20. So the people shouted. When the priest blew the trumpets, it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout. That the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him, and they took the city. This was a great victory. They expected that. They anticipated that. And they waited for that to happen, and it came. They exercised this faith in God. Now you believe that God will bring down your Jericho, and he can. Believe he's going to do it, and he can do it, and he will do it, and then you can praise him for it. What is your Jericho today? You know what it is. You know what it is. You know what that problem is. You know what you need God to help you to overcome. That is your Jericho. And you've crossed Jordan. Now move on in, take Jericho, and then take the land for God. There was a man many years ago by the name of Jerry McCauley. Jerry McCauley lived in New York. He was a sot drunkard. He got drunk and got in trouble so many times and brought before the judge so many times until his last trip before the judge, the judge threw the book at him. The judge said, Jerry, you're not coming back before me anymore. I'm going to send you back to Sing Sing Prison. And I want you to stay there the rest of your life. I'm tired of fooling with you. And he sent that old drunk back to Sing Sing. While he was in Sing Sing prison, there some Christian businessmen would go down on Sunday and preach those prisoners. They went down preaching and singing. And Jerry McCauley happened to be right near the dine bars there. And uh, they preached and he got under conviction and said he wanted to be saved. One of those businessmen reached in and took him by the hand and they led him to Jesus and prayed for him and Jerry McCauley that old bum, that old drunk that wicked ungodly man received Jesus Christ as his savior he lived such a clean Christian life until after a period of a few years they gave him a pardon but when Jerry McCauley got out of prison you know what he did he went right back to the same woman old woman he'd been living with not his wife went back to the same crowd he'd been drinking with one day the man that led him to God met him on the street and Jerry's about half drunk. And the man said, Jerry McCauley, I've been looking for you. Where in the world have you been? He took Jerry by the arm and carried him to his house and gave him some coffee and sobered him up and brought him back to God. Eighteen times that same man brought Jerry McCauley back to God after he'd backslid. He backslid those eighteen times. He brought him back. Now if that had been us, we'd have got tired of fooling with him and said, let him go on to the devil. And we're not going to fool with him anymore. But 18 times a man that led him to God in that prison rounded him up, brought him in, sobered him up, and got him back in fellowship with God. That 18th time was enough. Jerry McCauley got his feet on the ground and built a great Jerry McCauley rescue mission. And Jerry McCauley won thousands of drunks and dope addicts to God. He became a great blessing to thousands there in the city of New York. Many people came to God. Many went back home to live a Christian life. And when Jerry McCauley died, he had the greatest attendance to his funeral of any funeral that had ever been held in New York City. Don't give up on anybody. Don't do it. Keep after them. Help them get over their wall of Jericho. Eventually they might get their feet on the ground, and who knows, there may come another Jerry McCauley to the glory of God. Never quit. Never stop. Never give up on anybody. Because who knows? That 18th time, Jerry got his feet on the ground. And so be patient and serve God and God will bless you as you sojourn. You have listened well. Stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. Lord, we know we face our Jerichos. And our God, help us to overcome them. Help us to be patient. Help us to help those, our Father, that need help. Be thou with us. Have we in this invitation, our Father. Speak to every heart here. Speak to people in the radio listening audience. I pray today in the lovely, lovely name of Jesus. Amen.
Now, Debbie's going to play for us a couple of stanzas. Now, listen to me. If you're in this building and you're not saved, you ought to come down here and get saved. If you're in this building and you're backslidden on God, you need to come back to God. If you're in this building and you don't have a good fundamental Bible-believing church home, I believe Northside would make you a good church home. Why don't you think about it? Why don't you obey God? And while she plays softly, would you come while we wait? How about it? Come on while God is speaking, while we wait. Obey the Lord. You know whether or not you're saved. You know whether or not you're in fellowship with God. Maybe God will want you to be a member of this church. While we wait, would you come?